May is Stroke Awareness Month. So today we are going to take a little time to talk about strokes and where, uh, and we're also going to tell you about a fun event uh, that the American Heart Association is putting on later this month. We welcome in Dr. Kazuma Nakagawa, a Division President for the American Heart Association, and Jennifer Moran, a cardiovascular nurse practitioner. Hello, thank you both for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, doctor, why don't we start with you? We hear about strokes and people having strokes quite often. Uh, but what is ex what is a stroke exactly? So stroke happens when uh, the blood flow to the brain suddenly stops and that part of the brain uh, stops getting oxygen and blood and starts to die and gets damaged. And based on the location and the size of the stroke, uh, one can have a permanent disability such as inability to move, talk, or communicate or understand. Okay, what are some of the signs that someone might be going uh, having a stroke? So, um, so we actually came up with the acronym, the American Heart Association, called FAST, F-A-S-T, really emphasizing the, that we have to act fast when someone's having a stroke. So F stands for uh, facial droop. So if someone suddenly had uh, facial droop or facial asymmetry, uh, that's an early sign of stroke. Uh, A stands for arm weakness. So suddenly the arm drops or some kind of a mild drift. That can be a sign of a, st a stroke. Um, and S stands for speech, so any kind of slurred speech, uh, speech expression, or, or understanding, comprehension. If there's any kind of a problem with the language or speech, uh, that's a sign of stroke. <coughs> and the last letter, T, is not really a symptom, but it really emphasizes the time. So every minute, you lose about 2 million brain cells during a stroke. And you, you have about 100 billion brain cells, so you don't have that much time to lose a good chunk of your brain. So again, the acronym is FAST, facial droop arm weakness and speech problems. That's the common side of the stroke. Okay, I hope everybody got that because I've never heard that before. So this is great information. F-A-S-T. So those, those are the signs to look for. Um, now, if you suspect that someone is, go is having a stroke, I mean, you, you mentioned the importance of time. Is it okay? Should you call 911 or is it okay to drive them yourself to the hospital? You, you definitely have to call 911. First of all, uh, Two decades ago, there were like there were no treatments for stroke, but now there is one. It's called TPA, which is a clot busting medication. It kind of acts like Drano when your kitchen sink is clogged. It really melts away the clot and restores blood flow. And we can only give that medication up to four and a half hour uh, from the symptom onset of stroke. So if someone comes in beyond that time window, there's nothing we can do. And the earlier we give that medication, the chance of uh, someone actually walking out of the hospital without a disability goes up. So you, you really want to give that medication in the first couple hours, which is the golden hour. Now, um, if you call 911, the treatment starts at the scene. So the EMS personnel can actually do the initial triage assessment called the uh, Stroke Ready Hospital and notify the hospital. What that does is have the stroke team ready and meet the patient when the patient arrives in the ER and then they can clear the ER CAT scan room and we can give that treatment right away when they arrive to the hospital. Now, a lot of people may say, you know, my car's right there, rather than calling 911, I can just drive him or her to the hospital. It's easier, it's cheaper and whatnot. It's actually not the right decision because what that does is it causes a huge delay. Uh, there's no uh, pre-notification to the hospital, so a stroke team can't be ready. Sometimes they get waited in the ER triage waiting area. There may be a long time lost in that uh, waiting area. Area. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes half an hour for a nurse, for a physician to recognize that it's a stroke. And then when the stroke team gets activated, uh, there's a delay. So uh, really, uh, if there's any kind of a uh, concern for stroke, they have to call 911. Okay, that's huge. That's great information. How, how um, recent is this uh, medicine? Uh, the medication has been approved uh, uh, over almost 20 years, uh, but there's actually a now uh, much uh, uh, high technology, minimally invasive surgery that we can do to actually get the clot out. So a clot that's really big can't be treated with a medication alone, it's just too big of a clot to melt away. So now we have an a interventionist who can actually uh, access from the thigh artery and thread a wire and catheter all the way up to the body, to the heart, and to the neck, and to the brain, and actually grab the clot and pull it out, yank it out. And we can do that, again, in the first uh, maybe up to six hours from the stroke onset. Wow. Okay. So, like you said, timing is, Time, is very important. Time is Call 911. All right. Well, thank you for that information. Uh, there is a big event that's coming up uh, later in a couple of weeks, right? May 13th. Yes. Um, and I've heard about this event. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's called BEAT. Yes. So the BEAT event is coming up um, in a couple of weeks. And so the BEAT event is really geared to engage Hawaii's young professionals um, to really get them involved in the AHA's mission of advocacy, research, and education. 
So last year, the BEAT event actually raised over $60,000, um, which went to support the AHA's mission. Uh, personally, I actually benefit from the AHA um, toolkit that I use every day in my job. Um, most of the Hawaii hospitals use that um, to help with quality measures and to help improve uh, stroke patient care. Okay, that's huge. We're looking at some of the pictures from the event, um, and you were saying it's for young professionals. I love that uh, there seems to be kind of this, you know, um, events where young people can get involved. It's not your parents' fundraiser, I guess right. a lot of people are calling it. <laughs> right. So this year, this event is actually taking place at Sky Waikiki. It's happening on Saturday, May 13th um, at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The presenting sponsor this year is Mini of Hawaii. Um, so I hope everyone will come out and ha join us, have a great time, raise some money for a good cause. Um, tickets can be bought at www.beach8i.org. Okay, great. And we're going to have all of that information on our website as well. But Sky is a wonderful venue. It's beautiful up yes. there. Uh, great food. Looks like there's going to be dancing. So it's just, mm -hmm. it's just a fun event. But again, it, it's a party with a purpose. Party with a purpose. Yeah. And paint the town red is the theme this year. Paint the town red. Okay. I have a red dress. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you both for being with us. Uh, this is a very important topic, something that we certainly need to talk about and raise awareness to. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you.